Hey everybody, Norman from His Nibs here. And uh, the following video is a reshoot of a video that I made about 16 years ago called Filling a Piston Fountain Pen. And uh, it's been up for a long time, so I close to a quarter of a million views. And when I looked at it again recently, uh, it's amazing that it's gotten that many views. The sound is horrible. Hopefully the microphone here on this uh, phone will do a little bit better. But for that instructional video of filling a piston fountain pen, which of course all of you know how to do at this point, um, I used uh, my Mont Blanc 149, Meisterstück, or Masterpiece. And what prompted me to make this uh, remake of the video was that the, this is the 100th anniversary of the Meisterstück, not of the 149, but of the, the Masterpiece designation and line of Mont Blanc pens. And I don't plan on purchasing one of those. Uh, I'm much more leaning towards less expensive pens these days because they've really improved in quality uh, tremendously, especially many of those coming out of China. And I'm not that thrilled with the look of the 100th anniversary. However, I used the 75th anniversary 149 that I have, the Meisterstück. So I'll be using that pen again. Uh, I'll show you some close-ups of it. It's a little bit different as a, a band uh, at the cap top that says 75 years of passion and soul. And the O in soul is replaced by a little diamond. And the nib is also uh, similarly, uh, I really shouldn't do this in a close-up. Uh, the nib also shows and honors the 75th anniversary of Meisterstück pens. So that's what we're going to do shortly. We're going to look at this, uh, reproduce this old video and I'll link to the old video below in case out of curiosity you want to see what or hear what really horrible sound was like uh, on YouTube videos 16 years ago. All right, see you soon. Okay, let's take a closer look at this uh, 75th anniversary Meisterstück pen. Uh, it has a, a special ring towards the cap top, which says 75 years of passion, with the O in passion being a little diamond. Passion and soul. So 75 years of passion and soul. And then the cap band. Actually, it sort of makes sense to start at the rear, the obverse. Uh, Meisterstück number 149, Mont Blanc. See if I can get the right distance. See it a little bit better. Okay. Meisterstück number 149, Mont Blanc. And then if we take a look at the nib, that's a bit special too. So there's a 
circular area it says 75 years Meisterstuck or masterpiece. Now when I got this pen it was uh, a double broad and I had it uh, ground to a stub. Very, very beautiful nib. And we will demonstrate the filling of this Meisterstuck 149. 75th anniversary pen. All right, let's try and recreate what I did 16 years ago with this video, or as close as possible. Uh, I used a backlit light source, and you can see the slotted ink window. And it's a uh, little blue inside from the last blue ink I used. Now let's see if I can get this right without blinding us all. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the piston knob at the end and turn it counterclockwise. And what that will do is it will turn the piston all the way down the barrel. You can see it moving there. And that forces out any residual air. And then once we dip the nib and section into the bottle of ink, we're going to turn the piston knob clockwise. And that creates a partial vacuum, and the piston will, the reservoir will be filled as the piston retracts. Let me get that eye, that uh, light out of our eyes. So again, I'm going to be turning it counterclockwise to have the piston fully descend, forcing out air. And then once the nib and section are in the bottle of ink, you're going to turn clockwise. The piston will retract through the barrel, through the reservoir. And because of the partial vacuum being created, it will suck up ink into the barrel and reservoir. So I don't, I couldn't lay my hands on my bottle of 2004 Private Reserve DC Super Show Blue, although I'm sure I still have some. But I grabbed this Private Reserve Midnight Blues. A not, not too dissimilar color. And let's see how that works. Let me turn off this little spotlight. So again, you want to approach the bottle of ink by first turning the piston knob counterclockwise, so you're forcing out air. Submerging into your ink bottle and turning the piston clockwise, which is filling or largely filling the reservoir. You might want to do this one or two times to get a full fill. And then it's usually recommended to turn back until you drop a couple drops of ink so that the feed is not fully, fully saturated. If you're about to use it to write with, 
which we are. Okay. It's funny when uh, I first got this pen, uh, a friend and I took a look and we were just amazed at the size of this pen. I mean, again, you know, you go back to the the 30s and 40s and this uh, Parker Vacuumatic was uh, the normal size of, of most writing pens. And even through the later years, and this just seems so humongous when I got it. And now it uh, it's still an oversized pen, but <laughs> other pen models have, have caught up. And in uh, the last couple of years, of course, Jin Hao has come out with the X159, which really is a an homage to the 149. And this was uh, also Jin Hao's introduction of the number eight size nib. And the Mont Blanc would be considered pretty much a, a number nine size nib. Very close. The Jin Hao, however, is a cartridge converter. Not a piston, although a converter is a piston, but it's not an integrated into the pen piston. If you want something that's even uh, closer, if you want to give a chance, you want to give a um, feel, get a feel for the 149 without spending a thousand dollars, which might be a good idea. The uh, Wing Sung 630 is a a real reproduction at uh, about twentieth of the cost, and is a piston filler. Now you can get this with a a clear ink view window all the way around, or in this version, which repeats that uh, slotted look of the 149. So I wanted to do that with my own 630. And again, we can see the descending and the ascending of the piston works exactly the same as the 149. And the nibs are, again, the 630 is uh, a number well, it's actually a little bit even closer in uh, in size to the 149. They're really uh, they're really going for, shall we say, a real copy. Now, if you get a non 75th anniversary 149. You won't have this extra uh, banding and diamond. It'll look more like the Jin Hao. Anyway, with all of that said, let's get a pad out. And I'm going to use the same quote to write that I used 16 years ago. This is still a broad um, stub. Funny how the things you have the hardest. I'm parting with are 
of things. We need the least. Some of you will uh, recognize the author of what, or actually lyrics. Bob Dylan. I probably should have written my cursive a little bit larger because this is went from a, as I mentioned, from a double broad nib to a stub. And uh, it's still a, quite a broad stub. I haven't measured it, but let's see. I have a more conventional stub nearby here. Yep. This is like a, a 1.2. So a very, very broad stub on the Mont Blanc. And so this video is quite a bit longer than the original was. But uh, hopefully the sound is much better. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your pens. So thanks for watching the video and a little trip down memory lane. I expect that by tomorrow I'll have another quarter of a million views of this video. Um, love any comments below about uh, whether you have a Meister Sook 75th Anniversary 149 or have the new 100th Anniversary Meister Sook 149 and how they might compare and uh, your impressions of them. And while you're down there leaving a comment, please like, share, and as usual, accept gold bars. Um, or a 1963 Jaguar XKE convertible in British racing green. Either will be fine. And uh, until next time, enjoy your pens.